A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints, February 17th, Blessed Luke Belludi, Confessor, First Order. When Saint Anthony, in his apostolic zeal, was occupied in reforming the inhabitants of Padua, a young man presented himself to him and humbly begged for the habit of the friar's minor. This was in the year 1220. Luke Belludi, such was the name of the young aspirant, belonging to one of the noblest families of Padua, had received a brilliant education. Far from imitating the usual conduct of his fellow students at the university, he kept to himself and employed his leisure hours in useful and holy occupations. Saint Anthony, who had discovered that Luke had a pure and humble soul, joined with a well-cultivated and talented mind, gladly recommended him to Saint Francis, who received him personally into the order. Saint Anthony chose Friar Luke as his companion in the numerous missions which he gave from that time until 1231 at Padua, Rimini and elsewhere. Luke made wonderful progress in religious perfection under the skillful direction of Saint Anthony, whose apostolic labours he continued after the death of the latter. Padua had at this time fallen into the power of the truculent Azzelino. Events of the year 1239 filled up the measure of her misfortunes. Many of her nobles were condemned to death, the mayor and his councillors were banished, and Luke Belludi, the guardian of the Friars Minor, was expelled from the city. Edzelino gave the government of the city to his nephew, Encelino, a man as wicked as himself. The tyrant, irritated against the unhappy city by reason of her long and heroic resistance, ruled her with an iron grip. This unwarranted conduct was fatal to the university. Padua, formerly so flourishing, rapidly declined, and the beautiful church dedicated to St. Anthony, which had been begun toward the close of the preceding administration, was left unfinished. Friar Luke, however, had secretly re-entered the city and remained in careful hiding in the convent of St. Mary. After the night office, he and the new guardian frequently spent some time in prayer at St. Anthony's tomb, begging him to come to the assistance of the good city of Padua. One evening, as these two holy persons were praying in the chapel dedicated to the saint, a voice suddenly issued from the tomb, assuring them that their prayer was heard, that the city was shortly to be delivered from its tyrannical master. The prediction was verified on June 19th. Because of his great prudence, Luke was elected provincial minister, and as such founded many convents of his order. He was also instrumental in furthering the completion of the Basilica of St. Anthony. God granted him the gift of miracles and confirmed his sanctity even in this life. After he had died in 1287, his body was laid to rest in the same church in which St. Anthony reposes and was placed in the same marble sarcophagus in which the remains of the great saint were once enclosed. The veneration accorded to Blessed Luke from the time of his death was continually increased and Pope Pius XI added his name to the list of the Beatified. A reflection on the effects of the true love of God. The love of God is active in the interests of God. Saint Ignatius says that true love of God can be distinguished from false love of God in that it is active. If it does not act, then it is not true love. This love of God produced such powerful effects in blessed Luke that he sacrificed to God the glory of a great name and the honours and joys which he could lawfully have enjoyed. Such sacrifices are not required of all of us. We should manifest our love of God by keeping his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. Can you lay claim to such love of God? The love of God causes us to do everything out of the love of God. Our Saviour says, Where your treasure is, there is your heart also. Matthew 6, 21. The fervour of our love must have its source in our heart. Blessed Luke was imbued with but one idea, to be entirely devoted to the service of God and to accomplish his duties from the motive of pure love of God. Can you say in truth, all for the love of God? To the love of God is attached a great reward. It ennobles the lowliest deeds and makes them meritorious for eternity. It procures for us the remission of our sins, for Christ said of the sinful woman, many sins are forgiven her because she has loved much. Luke 7:47. Finally, there is reserved the crown of life which God has promised to them that love him, James 1, 12. 
Strive therefore to acquire true love of God and pray earnestly that it may be granted to you. Prayer of the Church O God, who hast prepared invisible gifts for them that love thee, pour forth into our hearts the spirit of thy love, that we may love thee in all things and above all things, and may become partakers of thy promises, which surpass all our desires. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.